Hey, good morning, church. I am here with Galen and Dickie Hurtwick. They are missionaries that we support in the Philippines. And uh, good to get a chance to talk with you guys today. Looking forward to hearing from you, hearing about what's going on over there. Uh, good. I want to welcome you to our Berwick Assembly live stream this morning. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank it's you. great being with you. One uh, one thing I wanted to ask you as we get started, and you know, we talked a little bit before we started recording, was that uh, you know a lot of people don't necessarily know who you are or where you came from or what's your story so can you give us just some some background some context what's the you know what's the story of Galen and Dickie Hurtwick okay. well I got connected with the church there because I I'm from North Carolina Concord North Carolina and a former pastor there Marilyn and Keith Evans and I were from the same church in North Carolina. So when they left North Carolina and went to Pennsylvania, that was our connection, my connection with my former husband. Um, and they start, and the church started supporting me. So you have been supporting me for many years. Um, I've been a missionary for 35 years. And so a lot of that, the church has been connected with me. And in um, 1999, Galen and I met. Before that, he had been a pastor and teacher at our AG schools in America. And my husband and I had been missionaries in Africa, Angola, Africa. And in 1999, we both lost our spouses to cancer. And we met when he was becoming a new missionary. He had never dreamed about being a missionary, right? That's right. It was not on my radar screen at all. Um, but in the... Um, Back in the 80s, I was asked to teach a course at Continental Bible College in Brussels, Belgium. And uh, it was a wonderful experience. And then about six months later, I taught a course in Singapore. And it was another wonderful experience. And then later at Asia Pacific Theological Seminary, where we are now. And uh, really felt God's blessing on that and felt like perhaps God was leading me to do that full time. Uh, it wasn't God's timing then, but it was later. And uh, so that is uh, what we have been doing now for uh, almost 19 years. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it's been interesting how God turned our lives upside down in our 50s when we lost our spouses and got married. Galen became a missionary in his 50s. And we a lot of times talk about how you just can't use age as an excuse with the Lord. Mm. that he can use you no matter how young or how old you are. Amen. I agree with that. <laughs> so I, uh, I know a little bit about the Philippines. Um, <clears throat> you know, I guess that's considered the Pacific Rim over there, correct? Or yes. am I wrong? Uh -huh. Okay, I'm good on that. Uh, but my mom actually went to the Philippines three times uh, on short-term missions trips with our home church, uh, mm -hmm. Allison Park Church back in Pittsburgh. And um, could you tell us just a little bit about the Philippines, where you're at in the Philippines. I know it's an island nation, so there's, you know, several islands, correct? 7,000. That's more than a several. Okay. <laughs> yeah. That's a, that's a low tide. Yeah. <laughs> where are you guys uh, located primarily in the Philippines? I know Manila is the capital, correct? That's right. Okay. We're on the same island as Manila. We live in Baguio City, about 150 miles north of Manila. Uh, we're a mile high in the mountains, so it's nice and cool. Uh, it's called the summer capital of the Philippines. People go there to get out of the heat. Uh, we teach at Asia Pacific Theological Seminary, which is the seminary for the Assemblies of God in the Asia Pacific region. I teach New Testament. Dickie teaches English. And... Um, so we, we've been there for almost 19 years, uh, went there in 2001, and uh, during part of the year, we travel and teach in other places. So this year, we are scheduled to teach in September in Kathmandu, Nepal, in October in Mongolia for the 11th time, and in uh, November in the Middle East. And uh, so we are able to go and see our graduates after they graduate and see what they're doing, visit them and uh, look at their ministry for, um, you know, what they were getting trained for while they, while they were with us. It's really interesting on our campus because of it being a regional school. We have students from 
anywhere from 25 to 30 countries. Our faculty is from six to eight different countries. So it's kind of like a Christian United Nations. And mm. it's a graduate school, so everybody is working on a master's or a doctorate degree in English. And for most of our students, English is their second language. Okay. So they have been sent there by either a Bible school or a seminary, a church, a general council to get a higher degree to go back to their countries to, to work. Okay, that's cool. Yeah. So, so you have traveled a lot in spite of being stationed, so to speak, yeah. in, in the Philippines proper. Uh, mm -hmm. Sounds like you've right. been all over the Pacific Rim there area. Uh, we've taught and ministered in uh, about 26 countries, wow. and uh, yeah. we were in Singapore a, a while back, and one of the students, one of the professors took us out to lunch, <laughs> and over lunch, the student said to me, I am your great-grand student, and I am like, what is that? <laughs> she said, you taught Casey Young, a young man who became, actually now he's the president of that Bible college. She said, this professor was Casey's student, and now I am this professor's student. So that makes me your great-grand student. Yeah. I thought, wow, that's pretty neat. You know, we have great-grand students all over Asia. Maybe some great-great and maybe some great-great-great-grand students. <laughs> that's cool. That is really cool. You don't, get an, you don't often get the opportunity to see those kinds of, you know, that, that kind of fruit from your ministry oh, necessarily. That's, so that's a huge that's a huge yeah. problem. It's going to be an encouragement too for you guys. Cause I know as a pastor, there are times when I think, why am I doing this? And is it doing any good? <laughs> you know, so That's I'm sure right. the same is true for you as missionaries, uh, dealing with different cultures even and having the, those separations. Yeah. Uh, well, at the school in Kathmandu, uh, Nepal, where we'll be in September, three of the professors and the academic Dean were all my students. Yeah. And so that's that's really neat to be able to go back and and minister with them. That's cool. That's really cool. Yeah. I wanted to to ask you as well. You know, we know you're in the Philippines, and uh, while we were talking earlier, you mentioned the word itineration, and that's unfamiliar to some of our folks. They're uh, you know maybe not sharp on missionary vernacular and and the kind of the was it three I believe three years on the field and one year back, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. Uh, so could you just explain a little bit about what itineration is and where you're at with that process and uh, kind of some of the challenges you're experiencing and facing right now? Yeah. Well, we come back uh, periodically to raise our support. So we go to churches, uh, conduct services, speak in churches, uh, meet with pastors, uh, meet with individuals about raising our funds. Uh, right now, we can't do that because of the lockdown. So uh, we're just, uh, well, we're, we are doing Zoom meetings like this one. Um, and that's about all we can do at this point. So it's pretty much on hold as far as itineration goes. Hmm. We actually enjoy doing itineration because it get, keeps us connected with the churches in America to really see what's going on here. And we really like the integrity part because people need to know what their missions money is doing. And it's, we, we just feel very strongly about that, that we need to give an account to the churches like you for what your missions money is doing. So it ends up being a, a learning experience for us coming back to America and seeing what's happening here. But hopefully then to, inspire people to continue to support missions, you know, us or other people. Yeah. So during the itineration process, you know, that's, that's a key piece of how you guys um, live your lives and do your ministry in the Philippines is, you know, you that's have right. a budget, a budget to meet before the AGWM will let you out on the field, correct? That's right. That's right. Yes. But, that's and right. Uh, you know, I, I guess then the question for me, for some of our people would be, where where is your heart and where is your mind at in in facing all these challenges? You know, okay, God, we came home to itinerate and now we're stuck in North Carolina. Yeah, we're sitting here. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, um, our travel is quite expensive, and so um, that is a a good portion of our uh, expenditures, and. Um, 
like I said, we'll be taking these three trips in the fall. And uh, churches have, uh, even though they may support us, they have given uh, special offerings for those trips. And um, so that's, that's one way that uh, churches can help. Uh, monthly pledges, of course, is another. Individuals also uh, help, and that's a, that's a big part of our budget as well. Uh, we get uh, quite a bit of support from individuals. So, um, yeah, it's, a, it's an investment, but uh, our lives are an investment in the lives of the future leaders of Asia Pacific. And uh, we really appreciate uh, Berwick Assembly's uh, support. Uh, it's because of the support that churches like you do that we are able to conduct our ministry. And we are so appreciative of it, not only financial support, but also prayer support. We really depend on your prayers. Yeah. yeah. Well, we've talked a little bit about some of the challenges, you know, uh, with the pandemic and the lockdown that's sort of forefront in everybody's mind. And, you know, the media is uh, faithful to discourage us <laughs> at just about every turn right now. That's right. Would you encourage us a little bit with, you know, a story or some instances that you've seen God using this time in a way you might not have expected? Maybe you're seeing some, uh, some doors opening that perhaps wouldn't have opened before. I, I think that uh, a lot of the churches are being forced to use technology uh, to continue their ministry. And maybe God is using this uh, just to move us in that direction. Uh, our school in the Philippines is having to go in this direction. Uh, we've wanted to do it for a long time, but now we're forced to. And as I was reflecting on this, I realized that the early church was high tech. Now, you may not think of it that way, but it came out of uh, Judaism. And Judaism had their scriptures on scrolls, uh, lar long uh, pieces of papyrus round around uh, around a stick, and uh, that's the way they had their scriptures. But a new kind of technology was coming to the fore then called the Codex, and it was a book like we have uh, with pages uh, sewn along one edge, and it's much easier to use, especially if you want to look up a certain passage, and the church moved to the Codex very quickly, and this is one of the physical differences between the synagogue and the church. The synagogue continued to use scrolls. The church used, used codexes. So the church went high tech uh, in those days. Uh, also in the Reformation, Martin Luther used the movable type printing press uh, to disseminate uh, his, uh, his writings, which was uh, very foundational in the formation of the Protestant Reformation. So, uh, the church in the past has been high tech, and I think God is maybe using this pandemic to move us in that direction again. Hmm. That's that's cool. I've been saying for a little while that I feel like this is similar in in some context to you know you read you know the book of Acts and the book of James when the believers are scattered about, and uh -huh. uh, <clears throat> just the impact that that had for the sake of the kingdom with the scattering of the church and the you know, the extended then uh, ev evangelistic influence that the church had. I feel like this is an opportunity as a church for us in that way. Um, That's right. But uh, let me ask you this. What, um, you know, what can we do? We've talked a little bit about the financial support and, you know, and, and the idea of prayer support. What can we do to support you? How, how specifically can we pray for you? Is there you know, something that you're waiting on the Lord for, something that you're seeking direction for, a way that we can really stand in the gap as a church uh, and intercede and pray for you guys right now? Uh, financially, we set as a goal to add 10 new churches at $100 a month each. And, um, you know, God is good. We have uh, gotten quite a bit of that. Uh, still lacking some. Now, you already support us, uh, and so we really appreciate that. But just pray with us that God will help us to raise the rest of this support uh, during this time. Uh, 
remember us in prayer. We want you to know that we remember you in prayer. We have made up a uh, little pictorial directory of all of our supporters, divided it into 30 parts, and we pray for uh, one thirtieth of those every day of the month. Hmm. And uh, so we pray for you every month and pray that God will just pour out his blessings upon you, that you will grow and be strong and united and really impact Berwick. And, um, and we also just ask for you to remember us in prayer. We can do that. I know I've gotten spontaneous emails from you guys occasionally say, Hey, we're praying for you today. Yeah. I need to hear some <laughs> of the backstory to that too. That's, that's uh-huh. really cool. I appreciate your prayers and your communication with us. It's fantastic. Uh, is there anything else that you want to share with us uh, before we close today? Uh, well, as you pray, pray for God's protection as we travel, uh, for wisdom in uh, dealing with different cultures uh, the way we have to do, and uh, for his anointing as we minister. Um, you know, we, we don't just want to teach facts, but we want to see lives transformed. Mm-hmm. Uh, through interacting with God's word. And that is our goal. And uh, it takes more than just saying words. It takes the power of the Holy Spirit. And so we uh, just ask for you to pray for that for us. Yeah. Dickie, anything Come see you us in add? the Philippines. What's that? Come see, us. Come see us in the Philippines. <laughs> I would love to. I would absolutely love to. I, uh, do you have needs? Do you, have, do you bring teams in for your ministry? At the- at the school where we are, um, the basic kind of teams that come in would be construction to help do something like that or medical outreaches. Okay. Because of the fact that it is a seminary to teach there, you have to have a doctorate degree or a higher degree than a Bible college. Um, so that kind of limits the people who can come and teach. But we're always looking for teachers to come and teach for three weeks, a block course, you know, as long as they're qualified because of our accreditation. Our school is accredited by three different organizations and you can come to our school and transfer back to a school in America as well. And we actually have had some people who have been interested in missions and come and work on a master's degree for three months or for one year to kind of test the waters for missions. So it's been used for a lot of people in a lot of different circumstances. Um, So if you have anybody in your church that's interested in missions and would like to come take some classes to work on a master's degree and live with 30 different nationalities on a campus. <laughs> you get a real taste of what missions is like in a nice place. Yeah. No, that's cool. Well, I would, yeah. uh, you know, I have, I, I do not have a doctorate, so I won't be coming and teaching anytime soon, <laughs> but uh, I, uh, I would love to at some point, you know, come over and bring a team and do some construction or work with you in that context to be, That'd be wow. so we'd love that to. would be wonderful. Yeah. And speak in some of the uh, local churches. Yes. That would be great. Yeah. We have a lot of people at our church that do construction and have trade. Berwick's a very blue collar area. So we have a lot of trades people mm. and yeah. okay. guys in the church that are capable, very capable construction wise and okay. familiar with a hammer, so to speak. So <laughs> might be an opportunity for us to, you know, to, to bring a team over your way and, and yeah, literally okay. stand with you in the Philippines, not just mm-hmm. support and in finance and prayer. So. It would be wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. We're, we're grateful that you joined us today. I've had a lot of fun Thank talking you. to you, getting to hear about Thank what's you. going on in the Philippines. And uh, we, we love you. We pray for you. We continue to support you. Yeah. And uh, we're Thank thankful you. that we got to hear from you today. We'll talk to you guys soon. Okay. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you. It's been great. Thank you. God bless you. God bless.